everyone welcome to watch it paint it in this video in this tutorial we are going to be painting the red gobbo the christmas themed goblin from games workshop 40k now i don't play 40k yet i might do i don't actually know what this miniature is for i bought it purely to make a tutorial for the channel and i thought at the end i'll put it on ebay and if you guys would like to support the channel and place a bid by all means do so get yourself hopefully a really cool looking 40k miniature or a really cool goblin if you're into goblins or something cool for christmas maybe a present for somebody else who's a into 40k or b into christmas maybe put him on the top of your tree guys you decide what you'd like to do and if you'd like to support the channel and if this miniature sells i'll just buy another one and we'll we'll paint some interesting miniatures for the channel just on the back of that you know all the money will just go towards buying things for the channel so let's go on with actually painting this and see what we can do now i want this fella to look pretty bright by the end so i've primed him in wraith bone citadel's contrast primer and i'm applying their plague bearer flesh bright green contrast paint to this miniature now i don't know if i'm going to regret using contrast in the end we shall see i don't know if i'll be able to make an awesome cool looking miniature by the end using contrast paint i won't be using it for everything but i think a lot of this miniature is highly textured and this paint will apply really really well and to just do a lot of the work for me but also just look super cool so i'm going to go around applying this plague bearer flesh as i mentioned to all of the skin parts that are showing so he's got his ear here and a little bit sticking up at the top as well i'm just going to make sure i'm going to micromanage the pooling of this because i do want it to pull perfectly or as well as I can do in my skill level. Got to get his lips as well. And then what else is showing? He's got his big knee. So I'm doing the flesh first because it's the inner part of the miniature. It's going to be harder to reach without potentially accidentally catching paint on other bits that I've painted around it once I've started doing the outside of the miniature. So flesh first, guys. That would be my recommendation. He's got his leg there, he's got his other leg here. This is this is the point I was making. Look how difficult that is to, to get to. But you could avoid this by just painting some of it before you glue it all together. That's another useful tip for doing this sort of work. And he's got his hand here. So I'm just gonna go around and carefully paint up the rest of this, just making sure it's pooling as I want with it nice and close to my face so we can get a decent looking result at the end. With the skin done and drying, I'm gonna move on to some of the lighter browns. For that, I'm going to use Skeleton Horde again with the contrast so far. I'm going to get this on his teeth. I'm going to go in one thick coat. I want them to be quite dark. Might have just a bit too much on this teeny brush, though, given how little his mouth is. So be careful with that. I'm still persevering. Just maybe have to slurp some back out once it's in and done. So we're already looking about how I wanted it though, not too shabby. I'm also going to get his loin cloth, just a light coat and it looks fairly light in the example reference work. So I'm going to go fairly similar here, be moving this around a bit more. Also just going to get above his belt as well, it's kind of hard to see, but I'd say it carries on through to there as well. So just a splash on that as well, not too bothered about getting a little bit on his belt. So I'll be painting that black so it's going to be super darkened down. Just up, just upgrading my brush to a size 2 because I also want to use the same skeleton horde for this big sack that's holding all these grenades around the back and I ain't painting that with a double zero. Ain't nobody got time for that. So just going to pretty generously just apply that to the bag and I think it'll take care of itself with the pooling. Contrast being contrast. Don't mind just catching the edge of his coat there because I'm going to be painting that in red and I'm going to be doing some edge highlighting anyway. Around the grenades, I'm just being careful. But again, I'm going to be darkening them down darker than this brown anyway. But still, let's try not to get any random brown splodges when I'm painting the inner lip of this sack. It's quite a lot of little bits to be careful around here because the snow is going to be white. So again, don't want to get any accidentally on that so just just it's a big brush but take your time be careful and keep moving the paint round and off of all the bits you don't want it on oh boy gotta go through his legs as well oh, on his shoe but his shoes are going to be black so it's not going to be too bad but i am going to just get a wet brush and tidy that up as soon as i finish this bit so 
tidy 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 anywhere else accidentally cut this box as well tidy 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 just flood it air flood that area with a bit of water and it'll really dilute these contrast paints making them pretty much invisible as aforementioned time to add a little bit of black templar to the mix now this i feel like might be when i start regretting using contrast maybe this is the one i want to do normal paint i am probably going to switch at some point definitely going to do the details i do think contrast and i mention this all the time is a tool let's use it when you can and other times use proper paint and especially adding in the details i think that's often where i think you can make a contrast model look really nice adding the subtle details with real paint after after the fact so this boots not actually going too bad as long as it doesn't pull anywhere poor sorry i should say from the pools anywhere i don't want it to then it should be quite good so we'll get this boot here i'll get the inside of that boot there as well and while i've got you here i'll show you i am going to apply some to this buckle Oof, this is going dangerous now i'll just take off some of the paint on that boot it needed a bit more but yeah i'm going to try well i say i'm going to try avoid that star I probably don't need to I think this star is one of those details I just mentioned. I'm going to paint properly in a minute using some metallics. So there we go. Get that on there. I'm not actually going to, I was about to re-dip the brush, but I don't think I should. I think I should just do this carefully and lightly with very little on the brush. I want to get his whole belt, both sides and the buckle. And this is really tricky. But he's also got a grenade belt here, which I'm going to do the same with. Again, I think I'm going to paint those grenades using normal paint. So a bit of spillage here is not going to matter too much. Like so, I'll tidy that up once that contrasts dry. So I'm just going to paint that with a boot in. Next, I'm going to be using some Militarum green. Still contrast, still contrast. And that's for this big metal green box I'm going to do him stood on. And I'll probably put some on that greenery on, on his stick wand. Now this, I am not sure how this is going to work, how, how this bit's going to go. This box is a big flat surface, so I could seriously see this pooling not how I want it to. But hopefully, we'll see. I'll, I'll be able to tidy it up if it does, doesn't quite look as I want. But hopefully it'll pool in the corners of the box and anywhere there's a dint and not any of the flat surfaces. But that's going to involve a little bit of micromanaging. micromanaging and just moving that paint around and making sure it doesn't pull on the flats. It's almost just like painting normally. I'm just putting on a very, very thin coat and working it off until it's just nice and shiny and hoping some of it just slides in that little gap there, making that look a little bit darker. I'm going to catch all of the hinges. I don't know what color I want the hinges to be, but let's just do them green for now and I might just overpaint them with some silver if I want some silver hinges. Later on, just carefully around the back of the miniature. Definitely, if, you, if you've if you not stuck your miniature all together like this, I would advise not sticking him at least to the base because then you're going to be able to work on all this base really easily and then glue him to it and then work on him. I would suggest doing it that way. I wish I had, but I wanted to just demonstrate how to completely build him before I started painting. So, woe is me. That's the life of a YouTuber. Yep, just as I mentioned, I'm just going to add a little splash of this Militarum green to the the greenery up here. These this holly, is it? Maybe the leaves anyway of of his sort of branch wand. Very very rustic. I like it. But yeah, nice. This is going to be a nice thick coat because I'm very happy for this to look a lot darker. Third time lucky. I might have um, accidentally not recorded, then accidentally not plugged the microphone in. But while I've been faffing around with that. I've been using Wildwood dark brown contrast and I've been using that on this one that he's got the shaft of his wand. So I've just applied that all over. And for the third time, I will mention that I was going to do this box here in the same colors, but I've decided it's so flat. I'm just going to paint that traditionally, just using normal paint and high edge highlight it round. Uh, so yeah, just Wildwood there for me. So I'm on to the bit I've not been looking forward to, the red. Now, I think on this bit of the hat, it's going to be really nice. And I think the coat might just be too flat. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. Now, I've thought long and hard about whether I should do the red or the white parts first. And the reason I've chosen the red 
is if it does spill over, I'd rather it spill over before I've done the white and then I can tidy it up. And whereas the white spilling over onto the red is going to make, basically make no difference. Whereas if some of this red spills onto the white, it's going to spread all over it and make it pink. You know, like putting a red sock in the wash with your white shirts, this gob, red, the red gobbo, it's going to have a bad time if that happens. So yeah, I think hat wise, it's going to be work out just fine. I think there's enough lumps and bumps for the contrast to do its work. The coat, I think, might be a little bit flat, but I was looking at the example on the box and it doesn't look that good at anyway. It's got like patches of light and dark stuff. So I think I'll, I'll give it a go. We'll see what it looks like. I'm definitely going to be highlighting the coat up properly. I'm going to do some edge highlights with it. So it doesn't matter too much if this isn't spot on perfect but we'll we'll see how it comes out and i'll i'm just going to go around now and apply the red all over i've timed this perfectly because i'm going to go get a cup of tea after after this so i'll leave this bit to dry because i'm basically stuck once i've done the red part or the white part i think i'm stuck for some amount of time because i don't want my contrast to mix so i can't do much more so yeah first of all i'll whiz around the coat and make sure we get plenty of this red Blood Angel's red, if I didn't mention, if you were unfamiliar with this exact red, plenty of this all over his coat. Red's nicely dry now, and it's not bad. This 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 pocket looks really good. The uh, arms look really good. This has got a bit of pooling here. I might tidy it up if I can, but it's not too bad given that it was one coat and not too much of an inconvenience like a lot of it's better than i think i could probably paint it. it's just these pools which is what i was worried about but they're not they're not too bad obviously on the camera it picks it up worse than in person at a foot and a half away it's not bad at all so it just leaves me the next well one of the last biggest contrast jobs to do and that's the white i'm going to just paint this with apocryphery which i struggle to pronounce white and i'm just going to put one thick coat on here and hopefully that's just going to shade all the recesses of this white fluff that he's got on his coat nice and grey and make it look like a very very nice white fur um, I'll be doing all of this I'll be doing this bobble 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 ball on the end of his hat as well I'll be doing the cuffs of his sleeves and the top of his hat and then I'll also do the snow I'm not convinced it's going to look good on the snow but i'm not sure me painting it would either but we'll see i'll give it a go we'll see we'll see what we can get away with and if it needs a little bit of additional work i'll do some additional work maybe i might use some basing materials just to up the the condition of the snow because i'm just not sure it's going to look like snow when i've painted a bit of plastic that looks a little bit like snow we'll have to see oh don't forget to do his beard as well it's probably going to be the one of the best bits of the white contrast paint there it will be it'll leave it should leave it nice and white and just slap some of this gray in the recesses just to make it look like it's shiny white some of this coat at the back is going to be super difficult to reach again if you've not stuck it to the base this is another great bit you could make a lot easier if he's not in the way just get the back of his coat in this white put it on a little bit too thick on this cuff I'm just going to spread it around and slurps and back it off taking more care with this cuff nice thin layer making sure to spread it nice and lightly around and last but not least for his fur getting his hat and his collar just removing the pooling from the red don't mind a little bit because I think the red will show more through than this light grey but nevertheless seeing as I can see it happening let's whip some of that back out just the snow left to apply this apocryphy white to and yeah who knows how this is going to come out don't trust it this is the bit that i think is going to look the worst so i might have to do some work after this to make it look snazzier but i just don't imagine it looking like snow it just looks like a lump of plastic to me at the moment and i don't think a lick of paint is going to magically fix that but you know i was I've been wrong in the past, I could be wrong now, and we'll see in a few minutes once this starts to dry. I'm going to use some Yandan Yellow to paint in these stars, I think that's going to work perfect on this. It's a really good highlighted area, raised bit, 
and some really nice recesses. So I think the contrast is going to work absolutely perfectly on this star. And it looks like it's already pooling in the right places. I'll do the back too. I'm also going to get a little bit on this sort of fairy light here. I think that'll do that fairy light. Again, I'll just do the back in a moment. And then I'm going to get this star on his hat. Not sure this should be contrast just because I don't want it to run much on the hat. I don't mind it going into the just off the star a little bit into the recess of the star but I don't want it to start making its way through the rest of the hat so a bit nervous about that but it's okay so far we'll see how it dries maybe should have just painted that properly I just really like the Ayandan contrast yellow is such a pain to paint and it, I think this does a really good job it makes it quite easy that's the three stars the one in his belt I'm going to do in metallics I finally cracked and got some real paint out real paint traditional paint acrylic paint how would you, how are we supposed to describe these things anymore anyway this is dirt splatter by the army painter i'm going to be painting up this last box so everywhere on it that's not painted so far being super careful around the snow this is quite watered down it's going to take me a couple of coats i'll be bringing this up to this color and then i'll probably darken down these recessed oh in fact if i'm careful to not get any paint in there the basilicum gray is already going to have shaded that bit for me same as if i don't go too close to these metal bits i'm going to get some free shading but i'm not going to worry too much because i don't mind putting a little bit of shade in if needs be so dirt splatter dark darkish well it's probably a mid brown isn't it all over this box for me I'm just going to use a splash of army painters dark tone just to reshade that little cut out there I don't even know what you'd call it that that indent just get that black and the same on the other side just letting that wash run into the gap itself and then across the front add a splash here too because there's a little dint in the lid there's actually a couple of little dints so just add a little splash there there a little bit there too and then the back the box as well has got that little dint. Let's put a line in there. Don't mind catching it down the edge as well, just to emphasize the metallic part standing out a little bit more. And that shall do for the shading for that. For all the baubles, I'm going to use Army Painters Light Silver just to give them an, a base coat and undercoat of something super shiny. I'm going to try some metallic paints on top of this, but I'm giving them a good start by putting metallics underneath this is the brightest so hopefully give them the biggest shine we'll find out so there's a bauble there where else is there we'll probably put a little bit of silver across the top of this sort of star medal as well and oh another bauble here and one on the floor i think I think that's it so it's just a matter of covering all of those with some nice light coats that's the three baubles nicely silvered up while i've got the silver i'm going to start edge highlighting a whole bunch of the metals that we painted on we're using that basilicum gray so i'm just trying to catch all of the edges of this padlock or i guess this is actually just a lock just the very side of the brush just giving it a light brushing to give that a bit of a shine and suddenly it looks like metal instead of gray i'm going to do the same down the down the inside as well just super carefully some thin lines just give that a bit of a shine there and then it's going to be the same on all of those basilicum gray parts so i'll do some easy bits on camera but i'm going to get this nice and close to my face so around this all the edges of the gun the trigger as well Just going to try and catch every edge that I can. Just give it a really strong highlight, but only on the edge, I think. Just give the impression this is metallic. For the grenades in the little sack, I'm going to try and carefully paint on all of those ring poles. I think that would be the most metallic part. And I think 
it'll be enough to make these look suddenly a metallic and b like grenades very very simple highlight I don't even need to be that accurate just trying to catch them all won't matter too much if you catch some of the other bits but I'm gonna just blend that in a bit more so yeah catch all of those ring pulls which just leaves us with this crate here which I will highlight all of these rivets so there's eight of those to go and do and then again it's gonna be edge highlighting just trying to catch the very edge of each of these metallic strips and that should be enough to make it look truly metallic that's enough highlighting of the silvers for me pretty happy with that did his goggles as well I'm just gonna edge highlight this brown box now this is actually using army painters wet mud it's an effect paint and I don't know what effect it's supposed to be it's obviously wet mud clues in the name but I've I, I never think it looks anything like wet mud so it does however look like a nice tone to highlight up the very edges of this box so again I'm just going to try and use the side of my brush very carefully apply a thin line across all of the edges of it and just that'll be it that'll be the whole highlight for this box hopefully make it pop out and look cool enough it's already starting to look good for the militarum green box i'm just going to use some of army painters plague shader not plague shader plague skin i think it's the same as necrotic flesh at least that's the color primer and i think the contrast paint here did, did a decent job actually but i'm just going to emphasize the edge highlight here with this plague skin just make all of the again just the edges pop out be a little bit brighter and just give the illusion of light catching it, all of the edges for his coat for the edge highlight and again I'm just gonna go, do some edge highlight and I'll do a little bit around where the contrast pulled a bit on his coat but this is abomination gore and prison jumpsuit mixed about 50 50 so quite a bright red and then a very vibrant bright orange and I'm just going to blend it, it's heavily watered down and this is where I'm just going to try and smooth out some of these, these pools, I've already attempted these ones and they're looking a little bit better and what I'll do is I'll edge highlight where it needs it, the arms are just near enough perfect but I'm going to add a little tiny bit on the on the shoulder there and a little bit here just to make this orange highlight sort of be consistent throughout the whole of the model so wherever you're looking any of the raised bits just a little bit orange even though I think all the pooling's perfect there so yeah this this little mixture is just going to go around find every edge especially the edge of his coat just here nice and vibrant and the edge of his coat here as well where the light would be catching and where your eye is going to catch as well so you get to see a nice highlight do a smidge on his hat but again this is just for consistency I don't think it needs it I think the contrast has done a good job there but seeing as I'm highlighting the rest in orange I'm gonna put a little bit on his hat just to make it match better so yeah I'm gonna go all the way around every edge I can find highlight up this and then I'm just gonna tidy up because this is on a raised bit as well I'm just gonna try and tidy up these pools just to, so they're a little bit crisper as I said super watered down so it's gonna build up over many many layers to cover that bauble time guys i'm going to use some of instar's metallic range carbonate red nice vibrant bright dark bright dark dark bright it's a red it's a red guys it's a darkish red because they've got a brighter one and these pots are really cool they come in five mil they sell like this starter or test kit i think they call it but realistically i don't get through that much paint they're going to last me for forever and it gives me a really nice range of colored metallics so we can make this bauble up here carbonate red for the next one i've got ivy green again in star metallic looking jazzy i think i would have preferred a darker green and they might have one but i couldn't find it and i don't know if they do it but i could have honestly i could have just misplaced it out of my my tester kit so i would have preferred a darker green but nevertheless this is green and it's christmassy and it's sparkly i'm loving it Guys, these bubbles are working well. I'm enjoying these tester paints, starter paints, whatever you'd want to call it. So then my final one, I've got another red, 
and this is radiant red. So this is a really, really bright red. It's almost pink. Now, this isn't looking as sparkly, but let's see as it dries, if it jazzes up. I may just go over it again with carbonate red, if cabernet, carbonate, whatever it is, cabinet red. I might just go, oh no, it is, no, it's definitely sparkling. I can see it when the light catches it. So there we go. So the baubles are looking swish, nice little detail. Like I said, that contrast paint, just a tool, do the base, start adding in details. And I think the miniature's starting to really come to life now. The next detail I'm gonna add in is using a bit of void shield blue. And I think this is supposed to be like the cable to, a, to the fairy lights or something. Can't quite tell what it was. I thought it was tinsel, but I think it's the cable to this. It's just a little splash of blue, a little bit of blue color there. Then I'm gonna make it e even more watery. I want it nice and thin. Hopefully it won't be runny though. That's the critical bit. And I'm gonna get his goggly eyes now. So I've painted these in white between shade, uh, between other colors just to bring them back out because I'd caught them with some of the goblin skin and some of the metallics as well but we'll just get them nice and bright blue and I'll highlight those up with a splash of white as well but they already look really nice suddenly um back in a bit well we've finally made it onto the bit I've been dreading adding the candy cane stripes my freehand is appalling maybe I shouldn't bother but I'm going to use Abomination Gore. I'm just going to add in a couple of stripes on this badge or medal. It's just a matter of having the paint nice and wet so it flows smoothly and just applying a few stripes. I say it's just a matter, I'm awful at this. Um, I am going to show you this one on camera and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to go do uh, because there's no way I can do it not on camera, I'm not even sure that's good enough. I'll see if I can tidy it up. I might just block in the color because this is not my forte. What do you think, what do you think? One thing to mention is, guys, why did nobody tell me this is not metallic? I wanna do this as a candy cane swirl as well. So I'm gonna have to repaint that over in white and add the stripes. I'm gonna add green stripes to this dynamite here, paint this white and red as well. And see if I can tidy that up. But that's the general idea. Hopefully do a little bit better, get it closer to my face. We'll see, I'll be back to show you afterwards. Um, or am I just painting some full block colors? What, what do I know? It's, it's exciting, right? We'll see in a minute, we'll see what I do. Whew, and I am finished, and I've grown to love this paint job. Really, really happy with how this came out. Added in the candy cane style gun and dynamite on the back. I gave this snow a dry brush in pure matte white, and I think that made that look a lot more realistic added a little bit of sterling mud just to the bottom of the base and painted the rim black as I often do just to bring focal focus point focal point back to the miniature there as I mentioned I will be putting this on eBay so do check out the link below if you'd be interested in supporting the channel and grabbing yourself this miniature at least I will be super happy if it doesn't sell because yeah this is my problem I never want to get rid of any of the miniatures that I paint because I get attached to them I've just spent a lot of hours painting this and I love him. I'm happy with that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And there'll also be affiliate links to pick up this miniature in the UK and the US. If you guys are interested in giving it giving it a paint yourselves, do click on those links and 5%. It doesn't cost you any more, but 5% commissions goes to the channel. So I can buy another miniature to paint again. Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you ever so much for all the support over the years. Happy holidays and hope you enjoyed the goblin. See you again soon. Hey everyone, so in today, wait that's not right, well I've never used this contrast paint before and I'm not sure it's going to be a good choice.
Nope, I'm out. Ooh, I've got some red mixed in with this by mistake. 